This is the second video in our series on adjusting journal entries and in this video we're going to talk about amortization. Uh, it may also be known as depreciation. So if it's in your textbook or how you're learning it they use the term depreciation. That's fine. Amortization and depreciation mean exactly the same thing. In fact the words can be used interchangeably. Um, okay so what amortization is, is it tracks the fact that our long-term assets and our capital assets lose value over time. So when I buy a car, if I buy a car for 20 grand on January the 1st, uh, when I get to my fiscal year end, let's say it's December 31st, I've got to say my car is not worth $20,000 anymore, and I need to keep track of that. Now how accountants do that is by a systematic method of amortization or depreciation. Uh, later in the videos, probably in a month or two, uh, I'm going to talk about more complex amortization methods. What we're going to learn in this video is just basic, simple, straight line amortization. So if you're interested in double declining balance, units of production, or even talk of residual value, you've come to the wrong video. Those videos will be posted in a couple of months, probably in, uh, where are we now, March I would guess. Uh, of this year, but they might be up now if, if you know March 2012. If it's after that, you can go looking for the video. If it's before that, you're gonna have to wait. Um, so, anyway, if you're looking for simple, straight line amortization, no residual value issues, uh, this is the right video for you. So, again, amortization is to track the fact that assets lose value. Uh, over time and as, as they're used. Um, so, here's the example question. A company buys a building for $500,000 cash on January 1st, 2012. The estimated useful life of the building is 20 years. The company's fiscal year end is June 30th. So this is something that was unusual to me when I was an accounting student is when an accountant buys something or a company buys something, the day they buy it, the accountant actually has to say how many years they think it's going to be useful for. They have to estimate its useful life. Uh, and so what we're going to say is, well, we got a $500,000 building. We think it's going to be useful for 20 years. Actually, I'll, I'll come back to this in Part B of the question. Part A is actually really simple. It's a basic transaction. Part A, we bought a building for cash on January 1st, 2012. That's a lot of cash. Often there'll be a mortgage payable or something. Anyway, January 1st, 2012, we bought a building for cash. Building's an asset, it's going up, we have more assets today than we had yesterday, debit building, and of course cash is an asset that's going down. To make an asset go down, you credit it. So we're going to debit building for $500,000, and we're going to credit cash for the same. I forgot to put my headings up here, debit and credit. Okay, so we've done our basic journal entry. On to the second part, the adjustment part of this. So on June 30th, we've got to say, is our building still worth $500,000? You might say, well, yeah, I mean, buildings don't lose value that quickly. Well, in accounting, we systematically have to reduce the value of our assets. So if we said it's going to be useful for 20 years and six months has gone by, January to June, we've got to say, okay, it's, it's reduced in value six months worth. Now let's, let's put numbers to it. I have a $500,000 asset. I think it's going to be useful for 20 years. 500 grand times 20 years is a uh, 20, or sorry, not times divided by, is $25,000 per year. In other words, I'm saying my building is going to lose value at a rate of 25 grand per year. I have a building of 500 grand. It's only going to be useful for 20 years. After which time, maybe I'll need to replace it, or it'll fall over, or whatever. So my building loses value at a rate of $25,000 per year. It depreciates at that rate or it amortizes at that rate. Um, too bad we're not looking at a full year. Our fiscal year end is June 30th. So January 1st to June 30th means we're only looking at six months out of the year. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, well, it's a $25,000 per year amortization rate, but I'm not looking at a full year, I'm looking at six out of the 12 months in a year. So I multiply by six 12s, or you know, you probably look at it and go half a year. Well, it's half a year's worth of amortization. 25 grand times six out of 12 is 
This is the amount of our amortization for this half year. The journal entry for amortization is really simple, but you just need to memorize it. There's no real trick here. There's no silver bullet. Just remember, this is what all amortization journal entries look like. On June 30th, 2012, we're going to debit amortization expense. And we'll note that it's on our building. And the amount is 12500 Then we're going to credit accumulated amortization. And now this is a special account. It's called a contra asset account. And we'll discuss that in a second. But we're going to credit accumulated amortization on our building. Again, for 12500 Debits do indeed still equal credits. Um, now, a lot of times students get this wrong in my class. They go debit amortization expense building, and then they just credit the building directly. That's not the way we do this adjusting journal entry. You'll just have to remember, always for amortization expense, the journal entry looks identical. Debit amortization expense, credit accumulated amortization of whatever it is you're amortizing. It could be a building, equipment, a car, it doesn't matter. Always the same journal entry every single adjusting journal entry for amortization needs to look this way debit amortization expense credit accumulated amortization again if your text calls it depreciation you'll say debit depreciation expense credit accumulated depreciation that's fine as well um, so here we are we've done our journal entry we've done our adjustment beautifully and we're basically done uh, the final part of the question says what's the book value of the building on june 30th 2012 Basically, they're saying, what's this uh, building worth on paper? What's it worth according to our books, according to our records on June 30th? Well, you can look at it and you can go, okay, well, it's a $500,000 building, but we've said it's lost $12,500 of its value. So that's exactly what we're going to do. The book value, the, the, the calculation is cost, what we paid for it, minus accumulated amortization which I'll call AA equals book value and sometimes that's called net book value so the cost of our asset was five hundred thousand dollars that was the cost of our building the accumulated amortization that's the total amortization so far and that account keeps track of it uh, it's a, called a contra asset account because it always gets subtracted from assets so our building is on the books for $500,000. Accumulated amortization on our building, $12,500, will always be subtracted from that. They just always go together like peanut butter and jelly. They're just the asset and its accumulated amortization account stick together, and you just have an asset, and it's always minus accumulated amortization. So the reason it's called a contra asset is because it's a credit account, but most assets are debits, right? Well, all assets are debits. Uh, so the fact is we always credit accumulated amortization, but we still put it with the assets. In other words, it's there with the assets, but it works against the assets, and it's minus from the assets. So we call that account a contra asset because it works against the assets. Anyway, 500000 our cost minus our accumulated amortization brings us to a book value of 487500 Our building is worth 487500 on paper. I want to be clear about one final thing when it comes to amortization and book value. It's worth 487.5 according to our records. Who knows if that's what it's worth in reality? We hope that we're close, but in reality, oftentimes the stated book values of assets for companies are way off. And we'll talk about how accountants deal with that, but that's way into the future chapters. That's way in future units here. Uh, so I'll do a dedicated capital assets unit in a few months, and, and we'll get to the bottom of it. But for now, just know basic amortization. When you buy an asset, a long-term asset, you know it deteriorates in value as time goes by, either because it actually physically deteriorates or because it goes obsolete. You know, I could have a 10-year-old computer that's in perfect working condition, but it's not worth anything anymore because it's obsolete. So anyway, as you use up assets, you amortize them or depreciate them, here's the journal entry. And I want you to remember that journal entry well. That's it for this video. The next video will be on, I believe, accrued expenses.